and good Friday evening. This is lecture 27, part 2 of the Ninth Commandment. And uh, we've been looking at the Ninth Commandment in the aspect of bearing false witness and lying and the use of our tongue. Our duties concerning our tongues or our speech are really summed up in one verse. And here's that verse. It's found in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So we speak the truth, and we speak the truth in love. Sometimes we want to speak the truth, and we want to nail somebody to the wall. But God tempers that with speaking that truth in love. This commandment is designed not to preserve our neighbor's property as the Eighth Commandment is, but to preserve our good neighbor's name. Now, this commandment forbids speaking falsely in any manner, lying, doubting, or any other way uh, that a person may devise or design to deceive one's neighbor. Speaking unjustly against our neighbor to the hurt of his reputation or bearing false witness against our neighbor, laying to his charge things that he has not done, either judicially, upon an oath, and that would involve the third, sixth, and eighth commandment as well as the ninth commandment, or extrajudicially, in common conversation, if we were to slander or backbite, tailbearing, aggravating, uh, what is done amiss, and making it worse than it is, and in any way endeavoring to raise our own reputation on the ruin of our neighbor, or to cast suspicion upon our neighbor. But to be extremely careful with this command, not to just say, oh, it just has to do with the court of law, because it doesn't, because the rest of Scripture bears witness to the fact of the truthfulness of our tongue, as we've already read multiple verses yesterday concerning that. The positive form of the ninth commandment is found in the words of Zechariah, Zechariah chapter number 8, and verse number 16, where he said, These are the things that ye shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor, execute the judgment of truth and peace, in your gates. So notice these three things in this verse. Only the truth is to be spoken. Judgment is to be executed in truth. And peace will prevail when judgment is executed in truth. Combine that with Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 15 of speaking the truth in love, and you have a very good way of preserving your neighbor's reputation and making sure you keep your tongue in check. A lie, however, consists of approximately three elements. You might be able to devise more than that, but for simplicity, I've got three. Number one, speaking what is not true, that would be a lie, deliberately doing so, and doing so with intent to deceive. I have told lies that I didn't know were lies, so it wouldn't qualify as malicious or bearing false witness. I would speak out of turn. There's a, there's a warning in the book of Proverbs on this that reminds us that we're not to we're not to take a single accusation against someone and run with it because until we hear both sides of the matter we'll be made to look like a fool if we're not careful and you can't render accurate just, justice until you've heard both sides of an argument so speaking that which is not true deliberately doing so and doing so with the intent to deceive every falsehood then is not a lie based on that we may be misinformed, we may be deceived, or sincerely think we're stating the facts, and consequently we have no design in misleading someone else. On the other hand, we may speak that which is true and lie in doing so, as in the following examples. Number one, we might report what is true, yet believe it to be false, and utter it with an intention to deceive. Or we might report the figurative words of another and pretend he meant them literally as was the case with those that bore, that, that bore false witness against the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember what they said in Matthew 26 and verse 60? But found none, yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none at the last came to false witnesses. So they kept getting people to lie about Jesus, and they kept falling through, but finally they found two that would tell a lie and could bear it rightly. We were claiming that he was talking about tearing down the temple. He never meant that to be the interpretation. He was using the temple as an example, and his body was the temple that would be destroyed and raised up in three days, not the physical temple. So repeating a lie that we have heard, yet sincerely thinking it's the truth, is also 
um, speaking a falsehood that's not a lie. So we repeat the lie. We've heard it. We think it's really true. Somebody says, the building's on fire. And we run and tell somebody, hey, the building's on fire. And then we find out the building wasn't on fire. It was some jerk down there crying wolf. Well, we didn't lie with the intent to deceive. And we didn't deliberately do so to injure someone. Uh, so we have to be very careful of the words we hear before we speak them. The worst form of lying is that malicious lying that invents a falsehood for the purpose of damaging reputation, destroying a neighbor, which is what the Ninth Commandment is explicitly teaching not to do. There are two things that, need, that we need to see concerning this commandment. Thou shalt not bear false witness. The one way transgresses this command. Tell bearing. Tellbearing is a quick way to transgress this command. Proverbs 26, 22 said the words of a tellbearer are as wounds, and they go down to the innermost parts of the belly. Tellbearing is when you're repeating a story that we have heard without careful investigation and having certain knowledge of the truth. I have people often come to me with accusations about church members. I've had people outside of the church do it. I've had people within the church do it. They'll accuse a church member. And if I become a tellbearer, I'll go repeat that story to somebody as though it's gospel truth and I don't know it to be true. Deuteronomy 19.15 says this, One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin. In any sin that he sinneth, at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses, shall the matter be established. Secondly, being silent when we ought to speak up is another transgression of this negative command. To tell the truth when one knows the truth is just as necessary as to keep still when one does not know the truth. Jeremiah 9 and verse number 5 says, And they will deceive everyone his neighbor and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to lie, to speak lies, and weary themselves to commit iniquity. And in Zechariah 8, 16, he reminds them, and we just read this verse, these are the things that ye shall do. This is what we ought to do, rather than bearing false witness. Speak every man the truth to his neighbor, execute the judgment of truth, and peace in your gates. Another way we, we can really uh, make a mistake in, in breaking this commandment, uh, the way we would transgress it, would be by the imputation of motive. And let me explain what I mean when I say the imputation of motive. Being too careless about hinting that people have a wrong motive in doing certain things. No man has a right no man is a rightful judge of another's motives. Often we do that. We say, well I tell you what I think he was up to, or I think I know what he meant, or I think I know what he's gonna do, or I know what he I know what he's thinking. I know it no we don't know what he's thinking. We don't know the man's motive. All we know is what comes out of their mouth or what we see with our own eyes. Matthew chapter seven verse one says this, Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye. And then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Very good lesson for us. Be, be very slow to judgment. Be very slow to judgment. And if you do, check yourself first. To make sure you're not guilty of the same thing. John 8 and verse number 7 says, So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. You remember the story, the woman caught in adultery, so the men said. But where was the man that they caught in adultery with her? So if you catch him in adultery, then you caught them with the individual, correct? Another way we can break this commandment is by flattery. Flattery is when one tells another what they want to hear, even if it's not the truth. If we say to another person concerning things which are not believed to be true, which indeed are known to be untrue, simply for the sake of pleasing him, paying tribute to his vanity, it is to perjure the soul and may imperil his own safety. 
In the same way, to utter unwarranted praise, to give a testimonial of character, or to recommend a man simply out of friendship for him while he is known to be unworthy of the testimony born, is to inflict injury upon the person to whom he's recommended. I've gotten calls from people about somebody wanting a job somewhere, and the challenge is upon me at that point. Am I going to recommend this person or not? Well, if the person is not trustworthy, if they don't attend church regularly, if they don't tithe, if they're not being faithful to the various things that are due a churchman, and they say, can this guy be dependent on this job? All I can say is, well, I can tell you he can't be dependent on at church. So be careful. When you say to your nephew or your cousin or your grandchild or your son who will not come to church with you, and isn't in church anywhere. Well, why don't you use Pastor Michael as a reference? Because I'm going to tell them the truth when they ask me. No, they can't seem to show up to church on Sunday. No, they can't seem to be faithful with their commitments. No, they don't do what they tell you they're going to do. Because if I lie about it, say, oh yeah, this guy is straight down the line. He's the kind of person you want to hire. Now I've injured that person by flattery. And I have broken the ninth commandment. Job 17.5 He that speaketh flattery to his friends, even the eyes of his children shall fail. Proverbs 6.24 To keep thee from the evil woman and the flattery of her tongue, of the tongue of a strange woman. Proverbs 2.16 To deliver thee from the strange woman, even the stranger which flattereth with her words. Proverbs 2.17 Which forsaketh the guide of her youth and forgetteth the covenant of her God. And finally, Proverbs 29, 5, a man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. Got to be careful with that flattering tongue. Tell the truth. The way that one keeps from transgressing this commandment. Do not be swayed by your peers into bipartisan spirit if you would be kept from slandering others. Listen to Proverbs 4, 14. Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. Go away from it. Don't get involved with it. If you're going to be swayed by the people around you, the peers, into slandering someone or agreeing with them while they slander. Yep, 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 yep. I know, that's yeah. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Well, I didn't slander them. No, but you were in the path of the wicked. You didn't avoid it. You didn't pass by it. You didn't turn from it. You didn't pass away from it. And this is what the command of Scripture is. Proverbs 27, 6. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. You say you're his friend, someone speaks evil about him, and you stand there and agree with it. Either by your silence or by your participation and your nods. Mm -hmm. A nod can go a long way. Well, Pastor Michael agreed. Be not busy in other men's affairs. Attend to your own business and leave others to God to attend to. 1 Peter 4.15 But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. Stay out of it. I have a simple rule. If you want to check the, uh, the biblical aspects of this rule, you're welcome to do so. But it has served me well. If I'm neither the cause nor the solution to the problem don't involve me. 1 Thessalonians 4.11 And that you study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. Why? Because you'll be a busybody if you don't. For we hear that there are some that walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Be busy doing the right thing, not getting into other people's business. Stay out of it if you're not the cause of the solution. Well, I think Pastor Michael needs to know. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't. Look into your own heart and seek to keep yourself in fellowship with the Lord. This is a way to prevent slandering. The man that is busy walking with God does not have time to be a busy body. In 2 Timothy 2.15, we have a command, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Again, in Psalm 139, three verses, or two verses, excuse me, Search me, O God, and know my heart. 
Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. God, go ahead and test me, check my thoughts, and I'm going to be studying to be approved unto you, not unto man. Next, shun the company of talebearers and gossips, because idle gossip is so injurious to the soul. In Leviticus 19.16, Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among the people, neither shalt thou stand against the brother of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Proverbs 18.8, the words of a tell-bearer are as wounds. They go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Proverbs 26, 20, Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So there is no tell-bearer. The strife, so where there is no tell-bearer, the strife ceaseth. Trouble stops. If others slander you, see that you have a conscience void of offense toward God and man, and then it matters not what they think or say about you. Check yourself. If somebody calls you uh, a thief, check yourself. Have I stolen from any man and not returned as I ought? Have I done unjustly toward anybody in the matter of business or finance? If I have, repent and correct it. Otherwise, if I'm, if I'm void of offense toward God and man, say what you want to say. A good policy is this, one man said. If I am wrong, I have no defense. I need to confess and get right. If I am right, I need no defense. The Lord is my defense. Moses was accused by Korah and many of the princes of the people one time for taking too much upon him, assuming too much and being, uh, I guess you could say, haughty about his position. Do you know what Moses' reaction was? The scripture says he immediately fell on his face and wept. I don't think that's usually our reaction when we're accused of something. We're so proud of ourselves that we immediately become defensive. We immediately stand up, our head held high, our chest puffed out, wanting to show this indignation that's been put against us as false, rather than reacting like Moses and weeping for the people that would be tell-bearers and slanderers. Proverbs 15.1 says, A soft answer turneth away wrath. A grievous word stir up anger. A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. Proverbs 28, 25. He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife, but he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. So listen to these principles, and we're through with the ninth commandment. Our words are not to be uttered lightly or thoughtlessly. Speak the truth in love. Every falsehood is not a lie, but will harm the one who repeats a lie even though they think it is the truth. Tell bearing is repeating a story that we have heard without careful investigation. Be silent when you should speak, and speak when you should. And finally, a flatterer will do you harm. Join not hands with these other people that want to slander their neighbor. See you back here on Monday.